but obviously I enjoy it. I enjoy helping people out. Yeah. You know? And so that's why it works out. And so just be cautious of that. Uh, I would say the same about the health industry, right? Like I went to like seven different doctors and there was one doctor basically told me like, we don't do preventative care. He basically, he is the equivalent of him just slapping me across my face, you know? Yeah. And saying, I don't care if you live or die, you know? And uh, he might have not felt that way, but that's how I felt. And so, uh, you know, when I finally met a doctor who was just like, holy crap, you're dying, it seems like. What can we do to fix that? You know, it was, it was a nice change of pace for me, mm -hmm. right? And so this is all I'm trying to get across whenever you guys are just dealing with anybody of any kind of industry, right? And so be very con uh, uh, cognitive of this kind of selective in who you surround yourself with yeah and if you have an instructor that you meet that's kind of garbage you know don't no reason to treat them like garbage <laughs> you know? yeah like i like i said it, it's hard it's hard to do anything like it's even hard to teach right mm -hmm. like i tell you guys like when i first started teaching uh, i was pretty bad at it so let, let me give you an example this is one of my favorite things to tell people it's like how bad i was at art or teaching um, when uh, I had a class, I had a student, she, um, she swore to the ends of the earth that she need, needed to study. She didn't need to study anatomy. Um, and I was like, you have to study anatomy if you want to be a character concept artist. It's like, it's, it's like one of the staples of what you'll need to be doing on a consistent basis. And I was baffled by her, her willing full ignorance and so i told her like over and over i was like you have to do it because you know how else are you going to learn the structure of anatomy and then she's like i don't need to like my anatomy people pretty good i already study anatomy doing life drawing and i don't like to study anatomy in any other way and i <laughs> said to her i was like that's just so naive it's like even some of the best life drawing instructors that i've ever had studied through photographs you know mm -hmm. like so are you saying that they're that you're better than them you know, and I remember like being real aggressive and um, uh, at the end of the day, what ended up happening, you know, she was strongly disagreed with me, obviously, and I was pretty, I'm coming down on her really hard. And it was like a 20 minute exchange. It, it was pretty <laughs> ugly. Uh, and after the class, she never went to class again. So she dropped out. She felt, uh, she felt that yeah. I, I was um, like, she didn't, she didn't want her money back or anything. She just left the class. And because, you know, I guess she felt that um, I was just a little too strict. And I haven't heard from her since. I don't know what she's up to. I don't know if she's still doing concept art. And here's the, here's the catch. She was actually really good. Mm -hmm. It's just that I, I, she could have been better, you know? Yeah. That's all I was trying to do. I was trying to get her better. And it, it made me think. I was like, you know, what, what is it to say about a teacher that cannot – motivate someone who's unmotivated mm -hmm. right like it's easy to say to somebody like as, a, as an instructor right um it's easy to say that it's it's partially the student or it's mostly the student i'm sorry it's mostly the student's responsibility to do the work right, right? and i agree with that but then what is our role as a teacher, yeah. you know what I mean, if our role as a teacher is to give them the information and knowledge and abilities to to work better, um, wouldn't it be a great a attribute of a teacher if he or she could teach someone who was lazy or procrastinated to become mm -hmm. an amazing person or artist? Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that like a good? a staple of a teacher's ability you understand me yeah and so i think uh, i thought about that and i was like yeah like it's easy to teach the motivated it's easy to teach the people who are already excited and inspired it's hard to teach those who aren't yeah because you have to believe you have to get to the spot where you think it's actually going to work yeah and so that's why i always tell people this and, and uh, my other teachers friends who are trying to teach until i try to that's my my way of teaching teachers right mm -hmm. and i and i explained to them to this i explained this to them so that they can have a better understanding of the student's perspective right and so then a, a, another but another fact that you have to consider 
is that you can lead a horse to water, but it doesn't mean they'll drink it. <laughs> so like if I do everything in my power to in, inspire you and move you and make you work, and yet you still don't work, then what can I, what else can I do? I can't force you to do it. If I mm -hmm. could have like a skill or I, if my school developed a system um, that if you just ate like this, if you drink this water every day, you can draw, it'll make you draw every day, like some sort of drug, <laughs> <laughs> then, then I'd be like a millionaire, right? <laughs> Especially if it had like no side effects, right? It was just like, you just drink this water and it just makes you do whatever you're passionate about. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it like keeps you focused and it makes you work. Yeah. I'll be like a, a billionaire actually, not even a millionaire, you know? Like the, the freaking uh yep. what was that drug in that one movie it's like the or was that movie with like uh limitless remember? yeah the limitless drug right <laughs> if i had just like had that drug then then i would just be like there's no reason to teach just like take this drug and then just go <laughs> <laughs> you'll be self-driven there's no need for teachers anymore right yeah like, like the matrix plug-in you know like you just plug someone's brain into like a wire and now they know kung fu you know, um, <laughs> like it doesn't exist. And so I, all I can do is try to like the best tactic as I have as a teacher is inception, basically, you know, like plant that idea in your head. That's the best I can do. I can't force you to paint. I can't force mm -hmm. you to draw. So the best way to do that from what I've learned to teach, like, I, like a lot of videos that I've watched on teaching is through stories through uh well thought through analogies and metaphors like basically taking complex ideas uh or simple ideas and just abstracting them mm -hmm. i like the example that i gave with the numbers right that was a beautiful example that was like a really because it really does make you make you appreciate like there's many paths to get to where you want to go yeah um, so and gathering, the more you know like the easier yeah gathering information right like how else can i visualize this the importance of this and i have hundreds of ways of explaining this one concept because it really comes down to it, it is simple it's very simple right it's just people don't want to believe that it's so simple they, they, they want to believe that it's some sort of magic you know but it's it's super simple um and so yeah you know it, like i try and try so many different ways to explain these simple concepts and ideas until uh one one of these ideas and concepts hits your mind and reflects so perhaps for you william like it was like an epiphany mm -hmm. you know, maybe for someone else it wasn't so much but when i talked about you know the musicians or something like that or some sports analogy that is what triggered that person to think differently you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's why i just got to keep doing it and so that goes back to the whole giving people some time giving them a lot of effort or giving yeah. putting a lot of effort into educating people um you know, I'm going to do this differently. Um, so anyway, cool. So that, those are the things that I think you should look out for when you guys are going to school. So then uh, another thing uh, I want to talk about, I want to talk about, you know, with Ryan Everett. So these, you, you two are 17. So what I'm super curious about uh, is a few things. One of the things I'm curious about is how did you find out about concept art? So I'll start with Everett. Everett, are uh, you there? Um, I guess I found out about it through YouTube because like until last year, I was just teaching myself through YouTube videos and that word came up a lot and I was like, what is this? <laughs> and so I looked up like some artists and then I guess as I kept progressing, my taste and art changed and most of the artists that I liked were commercial artists working on like video games and stuff. Right on. So you started off YouTube, what were you watching YouTube specifically? Uh, mostly just like, I think they're just all psycho videos, like how oh, to yeah, draw psycho is great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know him personally, but I saw a lot of his videos. He's really good. Yeah, they're really helpful. Yeah. Um, also, Proko, I think. For yeah, Proko is pretty new, so yeah. yeah, he's pretty good too. Yeah. I know of him. Like we are friends on Instagram. <laughs> um. 
but yeah, that's cool. Okay. So I have some thoughts that I wanted to express to you guys, specifically you two, that you guys should be prepared for your, your generation specifically. Um, uh, but before I do, what about you, uh, Raya? How did you stumble upon this? I was, I'm really interested. Um, I think uh, League of Legends, they League like, of Legends. Show right. of, like the Creta side. So that's how I found out about concert art. Oh, that's great. I'll, I'll let my friends at Riot know that um, because they might not see the importance of it. Um, I mean, I think they do. That's why they keep doing it. But okay, also but, FCD. Really. Yeah. S, S what? What'd you call me? FCD, Fungeru Design. Oh, yeah, that's right. He does a lot of free videos too. That's right. Yeah, see, man, I'm a big fan of free education. Like, in, in a perfect world, I don't want you guys to even to pay for my class. You know? Like, I want your guys' governments to pay for my class. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I get a check from, like, you know, whatever, wherever you're from. Uh, and then you just, you just show up. You know what I mean? Um, that would be cool. That would be cool. But there would have to be a merit system after that, though. See, the difference is that if that was the case, uh, there were, people would have to earn um, access just so I can maintain that um, that system of uh, – because what, what also I have going for my classes, because you, like the CDA example is a great one. I'm glad that it was brought up because those classes are also paid, right, like out of your pocket. They're not loan-based. Um, so the fact that people will still drop out of a class that they paid for, you know, like not like through some fake money <laughs> that they don't see until they graduate, but like money that they just literally took out of their bank account that they've earned and then put it into this class and they still like not show up, um, which I, I've done the two. So it's like a really kind of crazy system we have in place that allows this. Um, but if, you know, you have uh, like your, like if you pay out of pocket, you're more likely to be more driven, right? Uh, versus some of these kids that I taught that were just like went to the university and they didn't care at all. And so um, if I remove that that barrier, you know, that uh, cost the entry of um, the cost of entry, right? I, th I think that I will lose some of that. And so I have to find another way to get that and i think the best way to do that is to like you know some sort of merit based system but uh, the world is not like that right now so i don't have to worry about that but i'll think about a solution to when that problem does occur which would be a good problem to have which is that everybody can have access to my education without any marginal cost um so so what's cool about and your, your generation you guys you two specifically. You guys got to be careful. Okay? <clears throat> right? And let me explain to you guys why. Um, so so you, you guys are in high school. Does your high school talk teach you guys art? Uh, yeah, we have art I have art classes, yeah. Yeah? And are they like, what kind of stuff do you guys do in art classes? Um, it's project-based for us. So you can like kind of do anything, I guess. Really? Yeah. Give me an example of a project. Uh, it sounds pretty dope, by the way. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm actually. One of, well, one of them was like create a story, just do like characters and stuff. Well, not all of it is like concept art stuff. Um, but or, they didn't recognize concept art? That's my question. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, well, that's but, great. Uh, most of it isn't like for video games, it's more like visual development for like Disney and things like that. I see. That's still good, though, because. Um, you have to understand there's other schools that don't do that at all. I do not like what's going on with this Lord Tarso. This brush is dope, though. I just made this brush, and I'm, like, loving it. Um, yeah, like, um, I think that's fantastic, actually. So you, you got a really good art program going on in your school. Um, what, what, about, um, what about you, Everett? Oh, I actually don't really go to high school. I'm actually homeschooled, so. Oh, sick. I guess my art program is myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. I, yeah. uh, uh, I'm actually a big fan of homeschool. Uh, I was not homeschooled when I was a kid. But um, me and my wife talked about it. And 
maybe maybe Raya can talk more about this and see what her experiences are right now since she seems like she's in the actual the traditional sense of a high school um, but uh, my thoughts on the matter is I think like high school uh, starting from middle school specifically uh, depending on the ones you go to of course this is this is a broad gross generalization I'm making here but um they they don't <laughs> they they start to crush your soul <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah, they, they I start so th does your high school do that to you i mean they have a great art program which is great um, do they like say well that's not a real job the, you should you should oh, be an engineer historian or like some sort of scholar a doctor uh, what else yeah they're like that definitely like the pressure of just performing well like academically like getting a's and everything yeah. like yeah like you see you know a, a lot of people like they have many insecurities i think like that they don't show other people like from school yeah it's like oh, pretty yeah. Bad. yeah so so but, nothing's changed since i've been in this high school great uh no I don't fucking, think so. <laughs> fucking fucking great <laughs> um like I think there's like no other industry that's like that. Like most other stuff like has gotten better. And I think the educational system has gotten the same, <laughs> gotten the same. See, I didn't learn how to speak English at all. And so um, I went to school for 12 years learning English and I still can't speak that damn language. Um, <laughs> you know? Uh, and so that's what I'm trying to get at. And so I'm a fan of homeschool because fuck that noise. Uh, I don't like right now. My kids, my daughter is going to be going to elementary school, um, which I think is fine. She's going to go to kindergarten, uh, and right when she graduates from in elementary, like when they stop making her draw and be creative and be mindful of like being a, a, a sprout, like sprouted human being that has all these ideas. Like right before she goes to middle school where they say, okay, all those ideas you have, like here's the trash can, throw them in there. Because now we're going to train you to be a doctor or an engineer or a scientist or whatever. Because those are the only jobs that will exist. And, and I think that's not, that's not great, right? Mm -hmm. um, you you got to teach people. Um, I think it's important to teach fundamental stuff, right? I think it's important that everybody should learn sciences, maths. You know history i do i do believe that i see the importance of that i actually do but to make that like the standard of like higher education is what i disagree with in fact i think high schools like i think what high school should do is is make it so that it's just like um it's kind of like what community college does right where community college is kind of like it's an open book like you can take whatever courses and classes you like it doesn't matter right and so then you you can try all sorts of different jobs and stuff or career paths right or ideas of career paths so you can get broad in your scope of kind of what you want to be and remove those insecurities that Raya was just talking about right uh, and learn it early on and then and then high school should also be teaching you stuff like how to do your taxes how to cook food like how to how to do like basic living stuff that you you will learn the hard way once you, if you don't know how to do those things. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, like, yeah, just like basic, basic, basic stuff. And, and, and then when you go to college, you should be educated on how to find the career that you want. You know what I mean? Like you should, you should be a little bit more wiser to what you want to do. Um, yeah, and it's it's really frustrating. So I have a teenage boy, or not a teenage, I have two teenage, or I had a teenager, he's now 20, but I still have a young teenager. And um, yeah, they're going through that system right now, and it's like, I kind of hate it. And so um, it's too late for them, it's too late for me, because I didn't, I had to go to high school too. And, and I think it's important that the educational system needs to change. But what I think is really this, this is what I'm trying to keep you guys aware of. I'm trying to make you guys avoid these dangers, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so here's something that you guys have advantage over your peers, is that you guys know what concept art is. You guys are artists. You guys are working towards it, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't stop. 
you're going to, you're going to accelerate past all your peers and you're going to be doing something that they are going to be jealous of, not because of what it is you're doing, but by how happy you are by doing it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, don't be distracted by like them saying, well, look, dude, I'm a, I'm a lawyer now, bro. Look at my nice cars. They're, they're, they're just, they're literally compensating for their insecurities because perhaps they too wanted to be like a musician, but they were told not to. Most of my friends are actually like that. Like they don't want to pursue what they're going to. Yeah. Like they just feel like they have to. Yeah. And that's, that's the great unjust injustice. Like, um, what you should tell your guys' friends, um, is you should basically explain to them, like, see if this advice helps them out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Say, ask them like who their favorite musicians are. Right, like say, who, what kind of music do you listen to? Like, who's your favorite musician? And they'll tell you, right? It's okay, great. Like, what's your favorite, um, what's your favorite TV show? And they'll tell you. And then, what's your favorite movie? And then they'll tell you. It's like, what's your favorite book? And maybe they won't tell you because nobody reads. But if they do, <laughs> then ask them, right? What's your favorite podcast? What's your favorite YouTube? Like, ask them all these different questions of like, what their favorite content? Like, what's their favorite T-shirt line or clothing line or their favorite shoes or favorite their favorite. Uh, headphones, the favorite video games, okay? <clears throat> and ask them all these questions. And once you feel like you've had them answer like several or like maybe a lot of them, then say to them, someone had to make all that. That's what I'm trying to do. And so you can do it too. Maybe you won't be Beyonce, but maybe you'll be the producer who works with Beyonce, right? <clears throat> maybe you won't be... Um, the next PewDiePie, but you'll be the editor in chief that edits his videos. You know, there's jobs within jobs within jobs in the entertainment industry. We are surrounded by art. The building that you're living in was designed by an artist, right? The car that you drive was designed by an artist, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, the apps that you use on your phone, the phone itself were all designed by artists, right? They are equally as important as the engineer and the scientist there's like a great thing that i think that john john lasseter once said he said that like you know art art challenges technology but technology inspires art right so they go hand in hand like when i see like cool robotics and solar power cars i'm like i want to create a concept that like will challenge that you know like what if you know? Yeah. And then that, that same engineer is like, whoa, what the? Like, I never would have thought of that, you know, because they're so con constrained with their practical sensibilities, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm not, because I'm not a fucking scientist, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so then they're just like, wow, that's great. Like, that's actually really interesting, you know? Like, they're, like you know, Elon Musk himself, like, admitted, like, stuff like, you know, watching Back to the Future and, like, uh, sci-fi movies like Minority Report like inspired him to do these things. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, um, do you understand what I'm getting at? Yeah. And it's... and I think people forget about that, right? Hey, Jay, can I, can I cut in real quick? Yeah, go for it. It's even it, like Jules Verne, like the old sci-fi author, right? With the 50,000 miles under sea and uh, the space stuff that he described. People yes. say like, yeah, he was describing the future. How could he? And I'm like, he's not describing the future. He probably inspired the future. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great, great way of thinking about it. Absolutely. Right. He just had like, he's like, what if, you know, he didn't predict that that was probably going to happen. He was just like, what if it could happen? Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that's what our job is. Our job. That's why I try to tell people like try to come up with even crazier ideas to inspire people to want to make those types of things happen, you know? Mm. Um, and and it's, it's a very, very important job because, because people don't realize this, but our time is consumed engaging in media, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. there's, clearly, there's clearly work to be had, you know? And so, so there, there needs to just be a shift in education. Edu so like I said, I think high school should make you learn the sciences, learn maths, you know, learn English or other languages, right? As well as learning how to cook, as well as learning how to do basic 
income and management of your finances and taxes. I should also teach you how you should also learn how to um, play a musical instrument. Uh, there's research that shows that if you know how to play a musical instrument, it creates your connection between your left and right brain even stronger, right? So that's why you see like all these like, Asian kids who can play freaking grand piano, like also really good at math. Like it's not like it's not a joke. Like that's fucking real. Like if you look at uh, Einstein, he was a he was really really good at viol a violin. Like it's just like there's real science that proves that this is true, right? I mean, I play guitar. I could play guitar really good. So there might be a reason why I'm so much better at putting my left and right brain together much easier, right? I'm like a very logical, creative person. How's that possible, right? I thought that couldn't happen. And so, do so you see what I'm saying? Like, it, it, this is like real shit. And so people need to pay, like, if you are not making your, your, your uh, students try to do music and make it like a, like mandatory, like you have to do, you have to learn basic algebra, right? And at the end you have to do a math test and then you get credits to graduate, right? Yeah. They should be like, you should be able to play a whole song, get credits to graduate. Like give it the same equality of importance. That's what I'm trying to get at. Does it make sense? Like you should be able to draw a horse, you know, like draw some animal. If you can't, you fail, you can't graduate high school. That's what I'm trying to get at. You know what I mean? I mean, like you have to try because it's going to make you smarter overall. And it might introduce something that you might have not even been interested in at all, but now you are, right? Like me, like I, did, I was not interested in art until I became really good at it and I yeah. fell in love with it, you know? And now I'm like, like a, I'm like a renowned artist in the industry and I teach thousands and thousands of people, right? And so it's, it's like, if I went back and talked to my 17 year old version of myself and told him, what's going on now he would be like what how in the world right and so uh, i think that should be mandatory like when you graduate high school or middle school or whatever right just like maths and science like you should you should have a broader scope of knowledge and information you, you, you feel me yeah, and uh, and and i think uh, that's the the real tragedy of the educational system today and i want you guys to be aware of it, that you guys are on the right path. You guys have a very clear vision of what you want to do. Don't get distracted by what other people are trying to encourage you to do. Okay. Cause uh, <laughs> as someone who is a grown up and has friends who are also grown ups and who graduated from high school and went to college, uh, I, I barely know, like, especially in outside of the art realm, like in the art realm, I have people who graduated college doing what they do. Right. Like who went to animation and now do animation. That's, that makes sense. Okay. But like my friends who are just went to regular colleges, you know, just general colleges, um, none of them do what they want to do. I'm sorry, I'm saying none of them do what they went to college for. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I haven't found too many people who have. Okay. Other than like the one jobs that I've described, which would be uh, medicine. Um, a scholar of some sort, a scientist of some sort, an engineer of some sort, or a lawyer, potentially, right? Other than that, right? What about all the other jobs that exist, mm -hmm. specifically in the creative realm? And this, this idea that like, yeah, artists and all stuff uh, is a joke of a job. If you're referring to like, like, like these crazy, super fine artists, modern artists, yeah, I get that. Okay, like, you know, someone who shits on like a trash can and then puts it upside down <laughs> and then sets it on fire and says that this is symbolizing oh, Nazism or something. I don't know. You know, like, yeah, that, that, I get that. That's not practical. <laughs> you know, like, like, how is that useful? It's not very useful. Um, but, you know, drawing a pirate robot, you know, that's useful because people like seeing pirate robots or robots or pirates or individually. Uh, and it would probably be interesting to see that because it's entertaining, you know, it's engaging, you know, mm. and yeah. so people want to play games where you're just this little bird trying to go between pipes, right? Uh, people want to watch movies about brothers and sisters having sex with each other on TV shows, <laughs> oh. have incest. People are interested in this because it's dramatic. It's interesting. It's fascinating. Oh. 
I'm not saying that people are interested in doing that themselves. I'm just saying they like to watch it because it's, it's freaking gross. But <laughs> you know, I guess <laughs> you guys are like I don't like watching brothers and sisters having. Yeah, I know I don't either. But one of the most popular TV shows, two of the main protagonists, is a brother and sister, were banging each other. And like, uh, not to spoil it too much, there's a there's a moment in the show where like the brothers like people are going to people are going to talk now because they're like openly doing it because before it was secret now they're just openly doing it (laughs) and a little bit of my heart a little bit of my heart was like good for them you know (laughs) that's what i'm saying and and anyone who watches you guys must agree right you're like yeah that's kind of true <laughs> you know it's so funny like how did they do that to me how did they make me from the beginning of the show hate those two people to then like what like i'm like oh incest <laughs> it's, so, it's so so good man they're so so good at storytelling but that's my point you know like that's 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 entertainment that's what entertainment does it can it can make people's um it can make people like suspended disbelief for a moment you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> and and that's important it's a really important thing because nobody wants to just think about how shitty life is every day <laughs> yeah you know? so you want to separate so so there's a lot of importance in what we do you know uh, in fact our jobs are going to be the, one of the more important jobs in the industry of the world because they'll be the hardest to replace okay mm-hmm. Um, you you can even replace doctors, you really can, <laughs> you know. And so, it's really really important that you know you take your your career path seriously, you guys. And and one other thing that you generate your generation specifically, you're gonna see this. this I'm gonna be a future teller right now. I'm gonna be a soothsayer. Okay, um, your guys is you guys is um generation specifically are going to run into this thing where there is going to be um, a lot of people who are going to be chronically unemployed. Uh, I actually did a stream yesterday and talked a little bit about this. In my other class, I talked a lot about this. I was using the term useless people, but um, someone came up with a better term. (laughs) And, (laughs) and, and, And chronically unemployed is the term. And I agree, because useless people sounds real mean. Um, but it's, it's the truth. And so let me, let me elaborate. So in this day and age, there's going to be more jobs that are going to be automated, right? The first to go, I think is transport. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then right after that, I believe construction. Okay. And then right after that, um, uh, you'll have probably some stuff like some more like higher, more cerebral jobs, like a doctor or a lawyer even. You know, um, and then you'll start to see some of the creative jobs start to go. Okay, eventually all jobs are going to be gone, right? Um, and so the first wave is going to be the first big problem when transportation goes down, right? Because uh, there's a huge industry uh, in transportation when it comes to um, taxi drivers, uh, the Uber and Lyft drivers right Mm -hmm. all those people are going to lose their jobs and then and then but the ones that you didn't think about would be like uh transporting goods like the truck drivers right so they're gonna lose all their jobs okay um delivery services like ups and like you know um amazon drivers because right now amazon's contracting people who are just um Amazon drivers, like it's, it's kind of like the Uber, but for delivery. So like you, you have this app, they hire you to go to this, the workshop or the warehouse to grab a package and deliver it to people personally. It's really effective. It's really efficient. Uh, there's a little bit of hiccups. It's, if you've, if you've noticed kind of a dip in the, the delivery system in Amazon, uh, this is probably why, because they're kind of transitioning to this kind of um, like pizza delivery site type system. Anyway, like an Uber version of like delivery. But that's going to be replaced by automation, okay? 
And so then uh, that, that those jobs are going to be gone. And then obviously manufacturing, that's already happening. Manufacturing is already Watch the video. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. So then eventually what ends up happening, you're going to have a lot, like that's, that's going to be the biggest and baddest, right? That's going to like take out a lot of people, okay? And then the next jobs that are going to be fall like almost immediately after will be like, you know, um, uh, like the companies who are like competitors to Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to hold up. Like Walmart might hold, hold, hold strong for a little bit, but Walmart's going to go, Target's going to go, right? And if they don't go, they're gonna just going to be a, a different version. Of, they're going to look different. Like you're not going to go inside of them anymore because everything can just be delivered straight to your home. And like that same day within the hour. Do you understand me? Yeah, yeah. And so and you're gonna, why even go to stores? And so the, all those jobs are going to be gone. And so what are we going to have? We're going to have a lot of people who have no jobs, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they can go to college, right? And if they don't go into a, a thinker's job, like an engineer is a good job, a doctor is still a good job, lawyers, you know, historians, uh, like all the stuff that we talked about earlier that I'm like, like was saying, like those aren't the only jobs. Um, those will be more valued jobs, right? Um, but then the creative jobs will become, that's what I'm saying, like the creative jobs need to be equally as powerful because these useless people or these chronically unemployed people are going to engage in media, right? Right? And so it's important that that industry exists. That's why I'm, I'm in favor for a, a universal basic income. It's because we need to find a way to, to not have a huge spike in poverty, right? It's going to happen because poverty is not good for the economy, yeah. uh, aside from just not good for people, you know? It makes things worse. It makes the rich get richer and then the middle class get poorer and then the poor get even poorer, right? It, it, it affects more people than it benefits. Yeah. And so it's, it's important to start thinking about some sort of transition. It, it really is. Like even Bill Gates is like, it's going to happen. So we need to tax the company's uh, robots as if they were employees. Like the robots should get income taxed, right? And that's <laughs> smart. That's really smart. See, Bill Gates is thinking, see, that's why Bill Gates is, is, is a good guy, man. He's like thinking ahead, you know, He's thinking about the little guy. And, and so you guys, if you want to compete in this industry um, of the future, then yeah, you're gonna have to be something like a concept artist, yeah? Or like a, a game developer or a film developer, you know? And tools will become easier. Because even in our industry, modelers and concept artists, that job will slowly kind of be like one job. You understand? Because a modeler usually has like a lot of technical skill, like they have to unwrap, they have to re apologize. But those things are automated now and they're only gonna get better, you know? Yeah, and then, and then uh, the the amount of polygon that can be built in an engine is increasing because computing power is increasing. So then you know one day you can take like a super epic ZBrush model which has like millions and millions of polys polygons, which is like unguidely or unwieldy to put into a game engine and hope that it runs right. Yeah. Um, they will. The, you can just do that. You can just grab it as it is and just put it into the game engine and it will run fine when we're like, we're having terabytes of RAM, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then why do we need to apologize if we can just dump it in, you know? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And, and, then, and then there's no reason to unwrap because then you can just paint, because of so many polygons, you can just do a poly paint system. You can just paint each polygon as they are, right? Mm -hmm. And it, there's no reason to kind of have texture resolution anymore either. You just color each and every polygon. And that actually is um, cheaper to do. It's just not cheap to have lots of polys, right? And so you see kind of where I'm going with all this. It's like even in our industries, there's gonna be a shift, right? Yeah. And so, so it's important to kind of focus in on those higher concept of jobs, like jobs that require you to be a really well, uh, a, a really good thinker.
understand me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also create something that is hard to replicate. So I was talking to like people about like, you know, I think there's going to be a transition back to 2D having a lot of importance. And the reason why I say that is because 2D is, is dope and it's really hard to, it's really hard to do something like nights and bikes in 3D. Have you guys seen this? No. No. Look at this game. You see that? Yeah. It's pretty cool, right? That's pretty yeah. cool. See, so, like this is becoming easier and easier. Glad I got it. some treasure. Oh my god! What the? Uh, I, was, I was in the game. Uh, so, so you see, what I'm saying, like, you want to, yeah, yeah, the limbo. There's plenty of other examples, right? And so you want to, you want to take a look at stuff like this, and you want to understand that there is going to be a lot of value in having. Something that can't just be easily replicated. For now, it will eventually. Even this will be easily replicated. Hmm. Right when we start getting to like, so like, take a look at this game style. It's so good. Yeah, that's really pretty. Right, it's a mixture between two D and three D. You know. Mm -hmm. So this game, on its in, like the visuals alone, makes it stand out quite a bit. Because photorealism and all that jazz will be easily replicated. Like, you, you'll be able to do it, like, just from your phone. Like, you can just take a picture of your guys' bodies and then put yourself in a game, like, at the same hour, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, that, that I'm, I'm trying to tell people, if you're going to invest in 3D or 2D or whatever, invest in being creative, in a creative in the individual. You're going to have a lot of worth there. Otherwise, um, yeah, you're just going to be a cog in the machine. And eventually, those cogs are going to be replaced by robots. So, you guys, I think, uh, might have struck gold a bit on accident by going into the concept art field. I think we're, our jobs are going to still be highly valued. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I could be wrong. We'll see. I'm pretty sure I'm right, though. <laughs> but, but, you know. Uh, if anything changes, I'll, I'll be sure to let people know. Thank you. Well, I I used to be, and I think I still am, pretty scared of pursuing art just because I come from a family of Asians who are doctors. <laughs> yeah, and like, I don't know, I see all my oh, friends God. and they're all pretty artsy in terms of like, they all love theater and they all want to go into art jobs, but like it, everything is just pointing to don't do that. Like, yeah, it, it's just, yeah. Not to sound like super conspiracy, like, like a conspiracy theory, <laughs> conspiracy theorist, but it's like, it's the system is built against creatives, right? It just is. And it's ironic because the most creative people, have uh, progressed our economy, right? Like think about Apple, like their whole system is built around creative um, aesthetics and engineering, right? Pixar, Disney, you know? These are like huge enterprises that has like a large influence in the, in the general economy, you know? And so it's, it's kind of naive to think that there, there's no money to be made Right. Yeah. Um, just to give you guys some perspective, and you can use this am ammunition against your Asian parents. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, is uh, okay. Doctors on average make what, like a hundred twenty thousand dollars a year or something like that. Right. I don't know. Maybe. Let's, let's say let's say they do on average, one hundred twenty thousand dollars. That's six digits. Dope. That's pretty good. Dope. <laughs> Dope. I, I made a hundred I made a hundred and twenty thousand dollars when I was working at Blizzard about two years ago. As someone who just draws robots and monsters. So so tell your parents that. Uh, the most money I've ever made um on a job was uh, four thousand five hundred dollars a week. 
as a freelancer on a movie project. Wow. It was a really oh, sh- yeah, it was a really shitty movie. So uh, why are we paying him? Yeah. Oh, go away. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I, He's drinking. I, yeah, I I uh, I generally uh hated that job too so it's not like uh, it, was, it was great I, in fact that's that lesson i learned a valuable lesson that day that even if it pays well doesn't mean you'll love it uh and a great example of that um is uh donald trump like he's gotten everything he's ever wanted in his life and he's still a whiny little bitch you know and so <laughs> So it's 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 clear that wealth and fame and even becoming the president of the United States don't give them, don't matter at all if you're not happy with what you're doing. Do you understand? And to be more somber about this and more like nuanced, like you know, Robin Williams died from overdosing on depressants. Why was he depressed? Why is Jim Carrey painting on the floor? Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why I'm rooting for the Beebs. I'm rooting for the Beebs, man, because he 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 grew he grew grew up in royalty and fame, right? And that's not good for a child's psychology to be told that everybody in their world loves you just because you're some sort of iconic boy figure, right? And in fact, there was a moment where I think he ran over like a paparazzi on accident, and he's like, "Oh, freaking out," you know? And he was like apologizing for for obvious reasons because he's not a, an idiot, <laughs> okay? And the paparazzis are just taking tons of pictures and like getting in his way and he couldn't see and like the guy, even the paparazzi was like, yeah, man, I'm big, always been a fan of yours. I appreciate you taking the time to like help me out, you know? Cause he didn't like fatally like wound this guy, but he did hit him, right? And Bieber was like, I'll take care of it. Just let me know. He was just trying to help out this guy. But the paparazzi's like, and he's like, hey, can you guys give us like a second? You know, I'm trying to like, like I hit this guy, like let's like help him. They're like, nah, it's fine. He's like, really? Like you don't, you don't, you, 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 you're okay with me just hitting people and then just taking pictures of it. And you don't want to help this guy. Or yeah, we don't care. And at, at that moment, like this is a good reflection of like what the Beebs has to fight against on a daily basis. There was a there's a video of him at a concert. He was trying to be real with his audience, right? He was like, let me talk about success and like happiness. He's trying to explain to them like because I don't think he is happy, right? And he's trying to talk to them, have a moment with the people that love him. And they were just screaming at the top of the lungs, not even giving a chance, <laughs> right? And he's like, guys, like, come down, like, let's start. And they're just, ah, marry me, marry me. <laughs> and, and he just couldn't have a second. And I, I, I'm like, that, that's kind of sucks, man. Like, think about what happened to Michael Jackson. So if you start seeing Bieber start going crazy, uh, this is how it works, you know? <laughs> just because he's the Bieb and he has all that money and all that fame doesn't mean that they're happy. I mean, Jay Z uh, cheated on Beyonce. How is that possible? How? I thought they would be happy. They're like billionaires, <laughs> right? Do you understand? And so, so this whole idea of putting success around wealth is misguided. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay. And so, like, although I was making as much money, uh, and as I tell you, that's ammunition for your Asian parents because even if you tell them, like, it's about following your dreams and chasing your soul they're like we don't care you do your you go to college and you fucking be doctor you know Antoine, anthony you be doctor you have a good family and good job whatever mom you don't know me and so and, and ask your relatives if they're actually happy and they'll be like it don't matter make money <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I'm lucky because I have pretty understanding parents. My dad is more traditional, and his family uh, definitely doesn't Approved. support my choices. But that's fortunate. Uh, it's probably mom, because it's probably yeah. because your dad and mom like experience it, and they, like, <laughs> they kind of like know it's bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're just like, we don't want to do this to our own child. You know what I mean? That's I think that's probably what's happening. Like even though my mom was relatively traditional, she she loved me. You know, she wanted me to be happy. And so, and then when I started showing her like some of my checks and like the wealth that I was making, she was like, oh, "Okay, yeah, you don't you don't need to be no doctor." <laughs> but now I'm like vegan. She's like, "Vegan? No, you're gonna die." <laughs> um, <laughs> you know nothing, Jon Snow. And so. 
<laughs> so just be be very cognitive of these things, guys. You know, oh, yeah. um, your, your parents aren't going to live your life for you, but your parents have justifiable reasons to worry. You know, they want you to be happy and they want you to succeed, right? Yeah. Um, just just give them facts, right? Like tell them that uh, on average, concept artists in the film industry can make up to two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Holy um, <laughs> concept artists, senior concept artists can make up to a hundred and hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in game studios okay Holy crap. Yeah. and those those are those are good numbers man that's like real good money man and so so use that that's all i'm trying to say okay use these okay. these this information uh, i mean you could even use me as a, a great example so let's let's just do the math of just my classes right so uh, you can make a lot of money as a teacher for concept art right so like Five hundred dollars per class. I have about ten students on average per class. So I make five grand for every class that I, I have that fills out. I mean you guys can just do the math yourself. You can count how many students are in this class. I all paid five hundred dollars. So this is how much money I made, right? Mm -hmm. And I teach two classes. So that's ten thousand dollars a month for just teaching you guys to chase your dreams and, and accomplish your goals. Right? So you say to your parents, if I build a good career and I build a reputation as an instructor, a good instructor, and I can get my students jobs and all stuff, I can actually, you know, charge money just to teach people what I do in the future, like especially four or five years after having a, a reasonable career, you know, and after the longer I work, the more I teach, the more I can charge or the more students that will take my classes, you know. And that's, again, that's a reasonable amount of money. And if you just do the math there, right, that's $120,000 just from teaching my classes alone. But I take a month off, so it's, it's, uh, it's $110,000 on average. That's actually minus like the, the cut that sales takes from my thing, that's minus taxes, it's not entirely that, right? But you get my point. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. And so, so this idea that there's no money in it is is completely naive and you just got to educate your parents that's all mm -hmm. okay and then uh, I'm, but it seems like your guys' parents like i don't think you guys have a problem with it but if, yeah. if it ever comes up like you have some ammunition against other people like your other relatives perhaps. okay or your friends uh, my friends are pretty cool but are they I are mean, they right at least on the surface <laughs> are they Ria, oh yeah, it's Ria, it's Ria. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sure about that? I'm sure. No, see, even your brother doubts you. I'm, yeah, I don't even, I don't even know. Yeah, even your brother doesn't know if he's your real friend, see? Are we friends? <laughs> see, he didn't respond. Dude, that, that's, uh, that's, I, I made that's cold. You, I made you an insect deck for Magic the Gathering, and you don't even want it. Whoa, that is rough, Raya. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, I never so, so in this situation, you are the villain. I actually <laughs> no. it with your brother. Yeah, you're expelled from the class. I let you can't. copy my homework, Mandarin, for like the entire year. No, I can't accept, uh, accept this intolerance. This sorry. is Trump's America now. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, hopefully, hopefully that insight will help you guys out. Okay. Thank you. That helps a ton. Yeah, because you guys are, are, are like relatively young, and so there's a lot of people spewing a lot of different ideas to you. So as someone who's older than you, almost by double, right? Um, yeah, you know, life is always going to be hard, and everybody's going to tell you what they think is right. Um, so the best thing you can do is just follow what you think is what you want to do. And what you guys want to do is a rational job, okay? It's not like if you guys were like coming to me like, you know, I want to touch the sun. I want to touch the sun, Anthony. I like oh, yeah. you you can't do that don't chase that dream <laughs> all right like but being a concept artist in the film or game industry is a dream that's totally reasonable and rational that you can achieve within a reasonable amount of time okay uh and so there's 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 no reason to to second guess that okay uh it just will take some time i'm not sure everyone's different um but yeah hope that helps you out Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. All right, 10 minutes, the sequel. Must be a good name for this brush. All right, so I'll take some, some questions and then we'll go from there. Anybody have a question? Just unmute and just ask. So 
I was wondering, um, when you're sketching out concepts, would you say that a uh, three-quarter view would be better than a side view? Uh, it all depends. I prefer three-quarter view because it gives you more information usually. But yeah, it's a it all depends, man. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people prefer three-quarter view um, for the reasons I just gave, right? It just gives you tons more information. Um, but side view is, is good if you just want to, like, design and you don't really want to worry about other things like perspective. Yeah, I find I can get a little more crazy in side view with my shapes, but then it's really hard to convert them to, I guess that's just a 3D thinking. Yeah, so, so then is it, so think about the, the value then of doing them. Like the whole point of designing and doing all this stuff is so you can get you to a more finished version of whatever you're trying to work on, right? So if you do it side view and then yet you can't extract it from the side view, then it might actually be a waste of effort, right? You might be tricking yourself into thinking that you actually have some value there. Does that make sense? You might be uh, misleading your own intuition a bit on the matter. Yeah, yeah, right? I see that. Yeah, so it, it, side view can work and it, it should work, uh, but if it doesn't work for you, then you should reconsider doing it. Uh, or you should reconsider why you're doing it and what you can do to make sure that you can use it to to move to the other side of the equation, which is more refinement. I'm right? thinking like a good assignment after this class for myself would be just to take one of the designs and do orthographics of them just once at least. Yeah. We get the 3D thinking down. Absolutely. See, so see, that's kind of the conclusion you should always have is that if you, if you do one thing and it feels great, but then you try to translate that in a different way, then you, ha you have to ask yourself, was it really that great? Or was I just, you know, lying to myself? You know what I mean? Like, I, like I always talk about the story where I studied like all day, right? And then I went to try to paint something that was reflective of what I thought I learned. And I learned nothing. Like, I, I'm sure you've heard me talk about that story. Yeah, and, I think so. Yeah, and the whole point of that story is to kind of explain that, like, I thought I learned something, and then when I tried to do it, uh, nothing was coming, right? And so then I came to the realization that whatever I was practicing was I wasn't really practicing it, you know? I was just copying. That's where I came up with the whole difference between copying and studying thing that's really popular, right? Is because it's true, and I started to distinguish uh, and I started getting really good at distinguishing the difference between um, actively engaging what you're trying to learn versus just learning uh, mindlessly, right? And, uh, and I always consider like, okay, if I, can't, if I can't figure this thing out the way that I assumed that I should have been able to, then it makes me reconsider the, my whole position on it. And that's, the, that's how science works, right? Like scientists do that all the time. Like that's why I'm a big fan of science is because scientists are always proving themselves wrong and not in the way that like a lot of these freaking science deniers think of it. Right. Where see scientists are always proving themselves wrong. No, they're just like, they're just, sometimes it's like, there is like large gaping problems that they misthought, Right. But it wasn't, it wasn't like, um, like they were completely wrong that gravity is the thing right like gravity is not even a thing and it's like no gravity is still there it's just the way we think of gravity is different you know we used to think of it as some sort of force but now it's waves it's still there it's just we think of it differently now right because more evidence has come to light and so we we think of it differently and we just have to describe it differently now right to mirror what actually is going on well i'm gonna yell, yell at my dog he's barking Yeah. So I had to yell at my dog. He's just like, bah, 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 bah. If, if anybody like walks next to our door, he freaks out. Um, so do you, do you understand what I'm getting at though, right? Like, so that's how like scientists roll. And that's why scientists can put like smartphones in our pocket. Yeah, totally. Put Skyrim in uh, Raya's brother's hand, you know? It's, it's more a process than it is like reaching a sort of finish line and saying, yeah. Now I know the absolute truth. Absolutely. Just you're just 
remember that example again that I gave of the numbers. It's like you're only trying to just get more information of the, the patterns ahead. Because there could be, if, if we were to follow um, the same example that I just showed earlier with the numbers, right? Like a one, a two, right? So technically, if I were to follow this pattern, it would be like one plus one plus zero is one. One plus zero is one. So then one plus one. And then I'm sorry, I'm not going to get super meta with this. You get the point. So it's like two, um, what was it three, five, um, seven, 10, 15. But if we were to all of a sudden introduce a number that we would have expected, right? Right? Once we get to um, uh, 15, and all of a sudden it's like uh, 25. Okay? That's not, according to the, the, the logic that we had before, that actually does not make sense. Yeah. And so maybe what it is, the new logic that I've implied is that the pattern does this until it gets to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth digit. And then what it does is it transitions to adding the next number instead of the other number. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. The, the pattern and then, and then the pattern from here on out changes, right? Until it goes from to the eight number and then it switches again. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, it's about gathering more information. And so what you may hold true will work for you for quite a while, but as you collect more information, you'll be like, oh wait, it's actually a little bit different. Like it's still, that pattern is still true, but there's like another one there that I didn't see before that I need to now consider. So that's why I always, whenever people say to me something like what you're saying, you know, what if side view, I do side view, but then it's like, it's a struggle when I take it a three quarter view or to take it any perspective on it then I say reconsider everything then from why side view works for you now, right? And what, what it is, can you do to it to make it actually work even better, right? Um, yeah. Because if you think of it that way, then you're gonna be more progressive in terms of your advancement. Does that help? Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Hey, AJ. Oh my gosh, so loud. Again, I'm the street again, man, sorry. <laughs> yeah, can you uh, mute your mic or something? Or maybe I can mute it for you. Yeah, please. Or not mute it, I'm sorry, lower the volume. What about now? Yeah, it's a little bit better, thanks. Okay, yeah. Um, I just want to ask you, how did you become so strong with anatomy? I've been studying a lot and going to life model sessions and I have mm -hmm. anatomy books, but you know, well, you could tell that I'm still struggling with that. Sure. Well, I, I usually ask like how often and how much study have you done? Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm not the most, the more, consistent person of this world that's well, right. uh -huh. well that, that's that's usually i asked that question oh mute yourself i'm running <laughs> yeah it's all right i don't mind you running just uh, mute yourself just do the walkie talkie so that way you can do all your crazy acrobats whatever you're doing <laughs> and then at the same time it doesn't get so loud okay over yeah there you go thank you <laughs> um yeah, the reason why I ask, like, how much effort have you put into it prior um, is because that usually reveals to me, and, and hopefully to you, that um, you're just not studying enough, right? So just to give you some perspective, um, when I was first learning how to, to get better at my anatomy, um, I, I spent nearly... I spent nearly like two years pretty devoted to it, okay? And, and what I did was, when I first started, I had like a sketchbook or two sketchbooks that I filled up with just anatomy drawings. Uh, I have, or at least I had at the time too, like around 17 anatomy books. 
I went to life drawing pretty much every other day because those little times that were available every other day. And I sat in for about two hours. Um, I went to many workshops. I studied anatomy through photos. I studied anatomy through books. And I did that for, yeah, for nearly two years. I studied from sculptors. I studied from painters. I studied from other artists, uh, digital artists. You know, uh, I just did it a lot. And when I started working, I just did it even more. But I did it as a product of I needed to make good work. And so I would look at well-driven or well-drawn anatomy or well-sculpted anatomy uh, often as reference. And I just got better at it with a lot of practice. See, the thing about anatomy um, is that there's a lot of like philosophy that I like to spit at you guys. But there's some things that just take time and effort. And getting better at anatomy, there's no quick answer for me to give to you that would make any other sense than just do it a lot and often. Um, anything that you do a lot is going to make you much better at it. You already believe this, right? And so you have to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, do you actually do it a lot? And, and here's another thing you should ask yourself. Just because you did it a few times and you sucked at it, doesn't mean you can't become better at it, right? Like you make it seem, or at least the, your, your, your question implies that like I just knew one day that I was amazing at anatomy, right? That I just woke up and I said, I got it, figured it out, right? And this is the tool. Like should teach people how to do this and everybody's gonna now know and master anatomy. No, it was like, it was, it was, it was a marathon. I think even you said it, you had a good example of like kind of how it felt like when you were working on your assignment. It's like driving a car in the mud. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's like driving a car in the mud until you finally get out. It takes forever and it takes a lot of effort, but eventually you get out, right? Um, so you just got to keep at it. Otherwise, you just leave your car there and it's just going to stay there, you know? So hopefully that makes sense, some sense to you. I'm back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. So the other thing I can tell you is that you are pretty committed and you are pretty disciplined, well, a disciplined man. That, that, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, I've been, I've been working on that as well because I'm not the more organized guy you can find, right? Over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> over. Yeah. See you later, Rebecca. See you later. Be careful of those hand-sized spiders, by the way. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you just came to that conclusion just on your own, right? Like, so the question, again, that, that's not the kind of question um, that will help you move forward, right? You have to, you have to just, just do it. There's no, um, there's no easy answer other than just like committing yourself to it. And then once you start to do it, then you'll start asking some questions that are a little bit more contextual. And those questions are really helpful to start asking because you'll start getting to the point uh, and to the root of your, your issues with your own artwork. Um, but overall, yeah, like I think generally people who, um, generally who people who, who ask that kind of question, I usually say you're being, you're focused, you're, 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 you're being distracted. Okay. By this idea that there might be something I might've done differently. And the reality is, yes, there was, there's all these different things that I may have done that are helpful, but there's so many, right. That me giving you just one piece of advice as of now, based off of that question would be misguided because there's, there could be a situation where you start practicing it, right. You start training in it and then, um, you don't see the results or you feel like you're not getting any better. And you're like, well, AJ said, this is what I had to do. And I don't feel I'm getting better. Like what's going on? Like maybe I'm a fraud. Maybe I'm like really bad at art, I guess. And it's like, no, it's it just, the whole thing just takes lots of time. And this is just one of the many different things you have to do. Right. And so it's better to just get started. I usually say the, the real trick is just to get started. Like just get started, you know? And then once you get started, then you can start worrying about some nuanced problems, right? It's like if you were training for the marathon and then all you did was keep asking people how to train for the marathon 
and then people give you all this advice but then you never put running shoes once to go run right what's the point so you you got to get you got to put those running shoes and start running so you got to just study anatomy uh here's a here's a good way of thinking about it too uh it's really boring to learn stuff like that right and it's not it's probably not going to be that engaging or fun and that's why if you do it you'll surpass so many other other people you know that's that's the point that's why i stopped moving around the words mo motivation and inspiration and started moving around the words like persistence and patience because motivation and inspiration make it seem like you're enjoying the time like you feel like you want to do it but i say patience and resilience because there's going to be days where you don't want to do anything but if you do something that day irregardless of if you didn't want to that is what puts you ahead of the other person do you understand me because it's easy not to do anything that's the whole point that's why when we use the word hard work that's really why it's hard it's hard because some of these things just don't feel intuitive and we just don't want to do them you know but if you just put in that mind but if i do it i've literally passed a hundred other people just for this one day of extra effort i've just passed a hundred other people who decided to not do it today you know and it's, and i'm not trying to even encourage like 10 hours of working time either i'm just saying if you just did anything at all okay so hopefully that well like answers your question in a little more broader scope yeah like the the reason why like the, the artists that you guys admire are as good as they are is not because they have like an easy uh, method that makes them better. It's because they just don't fucking stop painting. <laughs> you know, that's the only reason why I'm your guys' teacher is, is not because I'm more talented than you, you guys. It's just because I painted more than you. And then you guys just want to know what you can do to achieve the same amount of level. All right. And I, I give you that advice. And so it's important that you understand that on a gr grander scale. So that way you can start, foc start focusing on a little bit more action-oriented questions that get you to work uh, more effectively based off of what skill set that you're suffering at currently. Does that help? Sorry. Yeah, it helped a lot. Thank you so okay, much. Cool. Yeah, you're doing a good job on it, by the way. You're, you're committed. You're doing a lot of good work. It's just like, I know, like, when you're taking my class, see, that's the irony, right? Like, I'm really good at keeping you guys motivated, you know? But I'm like, I try my best to, to not uh, make that the staple of your guys' diet, you know? I want to make sure that you guys are also realize that you need to be pretty persistent. Like motiv I'm not saying that motivation and, and inspiration are bad either, right? Like, those are great. They're just not sustainable. That's just all I'm trying to get across. It's just not sustainable system to build around. You got to think in the long run. Okay. So anyway, cool. I'll take one last question and we'll end the class. Uh, I have a question that's more technical, uh, just Go on for painting. <laughs> All right, so uh, just in terms of rendering, I can understand the, the idea of like wrapping lines and following the form uh, when you're painting within the form. But then when I start to get to the edges, I don't know if I should keep wrapping or not because when I get to the edges and I'm wrapping, it creates like a you know like a bumpy line. So then I just like I smudge it out, and I don't know if that makes sense what I just said, but it actually doesn't. <laughs> okay. I, I, have, I can't imagine what you're saying so it's gonna be hard for me to criticize it um can you try to be a more elaborate yeah so uh let's say that you have like a cylinder okay and you want and you want to paint the form so you do like these contour lines where you're like you wrap the wrap the lines around the form mm -hmm. when you get to the edges of the cylinder where like cylinder meets space yes um when I when I when I'm doing that, it just uh, I can't create like a hard edge, I guess, when I'm wrapping because it'll I guess escape the edge or something. Um, so you're saying something like that? 
like uh, roll outside of the edge and then you just don't know how to get rid of it no I'm, i guess uh like, i'm trying to figure out like something like that maybe uh let me see actually hold on a second yeah i mean the best way i can try to answer this just indirectly while you're looking for a better example um is to not do that yeah <laughs> right uh, whatever it is that you're doing that makes it like look a little bit broken to stop doing that then um is, there is a way to here we go do you send it through skype you can do it through skype oh uh, sure that would that would work as well Let me know. Yeah. Let me know when it's there. Hey, what? Who drew that little? Oh, yeah. You can do annotations, too, I guess. That works. Yeah, Maybe. I realized, Maybe. but then I realized that I had no idea how to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what you, yeah, it's, I'll, I'll try to answer it indirectly then. So, Whenever you're wrapping forms or lines with forms, you know, the whole idea is to prevent this. Hold on. What the? <laughs> now, the whole idea is to prevent this. Right? Lines that are just completely straight. So. Okay. Uh, if you're making any kind of contour line or shape that's supposed to follow along the form, like the whole idea is that you want to kind of imply that we're f always following that form. So this line is like captured against that ellipse and this line is captured against that ellipse. So even though there's like some sort of connecting points, a little more abstract of a cut line, right? Or dynamic. Like I'm always trying to think of the cylinder. Did you send an example? Yeah, so I just sent an image. Um, hopefully it just gives an idea of what I was trying to say. So like, what I mean is, I guess maybe it's, it's my fault in not understanding how to paint yet super well, but like, unless I put a straight edge, you know, if you were to take away those straight edges on that cylinder, you'd see how it'd be like, each of those strokes creates like a bump, a bump, a bump. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I don't see what the problem is because that brush is round. So it's, it's going to be like nearly impossible for even if you didn't have it, right? Like, so if you imagine like what you're saying, right? It's always going to be bumpy. It's just like, there's no way around, way around it. So the, the, the trick is, is that when you're painting whatever your form is, right? And you're you're painting the contours across it that you just correct that afterwards, right? And you use that with vertical cross hatching because it's three dimensions, so it goes in three directions. So you have to cross hatch not only horizontally, you also have to cross hatch vertically. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and yeah, like uh, Peter said, good suggestion. You could just have the solid shape first and just paint within the means of that. And and to kind of answer your question a little more broadly, um, that's one of those things, it's just practice. Uh, it's an, another motor skill type thing. It's really hard. Like, um, there's nothing philosophical about what you're trying to do. It's just like, you just got to be better. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like drawing straight lines. Like, how do you draw straight lines? By drawing straight lines. Right, like you can't just all of a certain sudden start doing it. If I gave you a good lesson on how to draw straight lines, I can give you tools to practice straight lines. Like draw two dots, try to draw between them. Right. Um, there's another way where uh, if you want to practice your forms, then try to draw your forms in two d two dimensions, and then try to draw cross sections. 
that create three dimension imagery? Oh. Right? Like, can you do that? And can you like have it wrap with the perspective effectively? You know? And then yeah. once you start doing that, then say, can you then paint this accurately? You know? You understand? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and that just takes practice. Like, there's no other way I can explain it. <laughs> like, and 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 to make it easier to practice these types of things, the easiest way I painted on the wrong layer. Yeah, yeah, nice. Um, the easiest way to practice these things is, is like what I say, just to engage often. You know, and and a lot of people just don't. They just like. Um, they just don't practice just the basic stuff. They just always want to go straight to drawing a cool character, you know? And then uh, another conundrum that you run into is that uh, if you if you don't practice just your basic forms and, and stuff, and then you also can't, you don't practice your anatomy and stuff, and you just go straight in there, it's really hard to determine exactly what you're doing wrong, right? Because both of those things could be bad, you understand? Know and so yeah. that's why it's good to practice and paint often like a character. So then you can look at it and say, well, I think it's the anatomy and then go study anatomy and then come back and then be like, okay, I, now that I figured out the anatomy, maybe it's the forms, maybe because my anatomy feels better, but my forms feel like they're holding me back. Maybe I don't understand the forms of my anatomy. Right. So let's go study that. And then you come back and say, well, now I think my gesture, like the overall movement of my painting feels very stiff. Maybe that's holding me back. So you've studied gestures. It, my, my painting feels two-dimensional. Maybe I need to work on my perspective a little bit more. So you go and study. You see what I'm saying? You, you always come back with a new question. Stay focused on that, the answer of that question. And then come and try to solve it. And there's always going to be another one. You understand? And uh, it goes back to the number analogy I used again. Like you just, every time you do that, you're just revealing one more piece of the puzzle. Right? That allows you to do a much more effective job. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but brushwork stuff is just practice. Um, anatomy stuff requires study. Make sense? If I told you to do 100 push ups and then follow along with like a compound movement uh, outside of a push up, like, uh, or I'm sorry, isolation movements, because the push up is a compound movement, and then move it to isolation to like, you know, isolating by dumbbell presses, you know, uh, with the incline dumbbell press with like, um, with like maybe like uh, variations of push-ups, like plank push-ups to broaden your shoulders, right? To overall strengthen your your push. Um, if you don't go do a push-up at all, then you're never going to even get started, right? And then if I then if I explain to you, it's important to know your anatomy when you're working out because it helps you know how to f create that mind-muscle connection. It'll allow you to really like focus in on that muscle to increase its strength, right? That, that will go on deaf ears if you haven't even tried to do a push-up. Yeah. You know? It's like, well, first let's do some push-ups, uh, and then we'll move on to some more advanced training. And so I think you're doing it, though. Like, you're, you, that's a, actually a pretty good poignant question. You know, that was a very specific one. That was actually good. I think it's important to realize that the, the, but the question that you were asking is rooted in a skill, like a practice-oriented skill, meaning that the best way to improve it is by just straight up practice, okay? Like create a good connection between your hands and eyes, right? Like create that hand eye coordination. Create, increase your draftsmanship, yeah? Sure. Um, th otherwise, yeah, you're gonna be struggling with it every time that you don't practice it. And eventually you will just get out of it. And eventually, even if you don't directly practice it, because you'll be just painting all the time anyway, so you'll just intuitively get rid of that problem. But if you want to focus in on it, then you got to focus in on it. Just try to paint cubes, spheres, cylinders, uh, maybe oblong forms and shapes, right? Mm -hmm. Often. Okay. To just like laser focus, practice that one thing. Got it? Sure. 
And now, I did that. I did that a lot. I did it like quite a lot. I, I when I whenever I was working, I would have like one PSD file that had just a bunch of just random ass shapes in there, you know. And I would just like do some work and then do some studies, do some work and then do some studies, you know, all the time. All right, cool. Yeah, thanks a lot. Absolutely. All right, guys, that's where I'm going to cut the the class. Thanks again for all the good work, y'all. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate your efforts. Uh, you guys have a great weekend. Stay strong, stay committed, and uh, peace out. And watch out for cars, because fucking people don't know how to drive. And other people that do know how to drive are goddamn terrorists. Laters, guys. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.